Career readiness defined. NACE defines career readiness, identifies key competencies. Let's take a look for the new college graduate. As we know, the career readiness of college graduates is an important issue in higher education, in the labor market, and in the public arena. Yet, up to now, career readiness has been undefined, making it difficult for leaders in higher education, workforce development, and public policy to work together effectively to ensure the career readiness of today's graduates. We have career readiness as a central theme in our Q Passport to Success. We actually track career readiness via the Quinlan IQ, Index of Quinlan. And we focus on several career readiness competencies, which I'm gonna review. And the National Association of Colleges and Employers, through a task force of college career services and HR staffing professionals, developed a definition based on extensive research among employers and identified really seven competencies associated with career readiness. So let's go through them. First of all, what's the definition? Well, the definition is career readiness is the attainment and demonstration of requisite competencies that broadly prepare college graduates for a successful transition into the workplace. The first is critical thinking and problem solving. Of course, I used to teach at my former institution Exercising sound reasoning to analyze issues, make decisions, and overcome problems. The individual is able to obtain, interpret, and use knowledge, facts, and data in this process, and may demonstrate originality and inventiveness. The second is oral and written communications. Many employers tell us they're looking for those critical thinking and problem solving skills as well as strong communication, interpersonal, the ability to, to communicate reports and uh, you know to present to, to supervisors and managers is so important. So articulating thoughts and ideas clearly and effectively in written and oral forms to persons inside as well as outside of the organization. The individual has public speaking skills, is able to express ideas to others and can write, edit memos, letters, and complex technical reports clearly and effectively. Teamwork and collaboration. This is why I push those team presentations so much in my global health class. Building collaborative relationships with colleagues and customers, representing diverse cultures, races, ages, genders, religions, lifestyles, and viewpoints. The individual is able to work within a team structure and can negotiate and manage conflict. Information technology application, another very important skill. Selecting and using appropriate technology to accomplish a given task. Leveraging that technology. Being able to apply computing skills to solve problems. We've seen in the field of accounting a greater demand for accounting majors who have a minor in information systems. This is directly from the employers. Another very popular competency is leadership. Leveraging the strengths of others to achieve common goals and the use of interpersonal skills to coach and develop others. The individual is able to assess and manage his or her emotions and those of others. Use empathetic skills to guide and motivate and organize, prioritize, and delegate work. I was once asked a question by a president of a university. He said, this should be an easy answer for a Columbia grad. He said, define leadership. And I said, it's the success of those you lead with humility. He said, well, good answer. <laughs> so an absolutely important skill to have, a competency. I like to call it a growth trait. And uh, sure enough, employers are looking for it and may even ask you about it during an interview. Next, we have professionalism and work ethic. And this one was so important that we actually started a professionalism task force and committee, which I was a part of at Quinlan School of Business. We had several panelists come, employers, executive recruiters, you name it, to talk about the issue and to really uh, let it impact our culture, making sure students understand that they can't just write to a professor and say, hey, how you doing? You know, that they should be saying, dear professor, and, and, and understand just the formality and etiquette of communication. 
when it comes to asking for a reference, when it comes to asking questions to a professor, when it comes to reaching out to an employer to follow up. So being able to demonstrate personal accountability and effective work habits and understand the impact of nonverbal communication on professional work image. The individual demonstrates integrity and ethical behavior, acts responsibly with the interests of the larger community in mind and is able to learn from his or her mistakes. Absolutely important. Making sure that you learn from your mistakes and you accept that and you don't get defensive and you actually embrace constructive criticism. Finally, career management. You heard me say it before, who is managing your career? Identifying and articulating one's skills, strengths, knowledge, and experiences relevant to the position, desired, and career goals, and identify areas necessary for professional growth. The individual is able to navigate and explore job options, understands and can take the steps necessary to pursue opportunities, and understand how to self-advocate for opportunities in the workplace. Knowing when and how to really ask for that promotion, understanding career transitions, understanding career advancement. My older brother once said, you know, every single time I went to ask for a promotion, I set myself up. I described what value I've brought to the table, what value added I bring, and what I've accomplished in the past couple years. And every single time, I didn't get the promotion. However, my supervisor talked about what I needed to do to get there. And then I set myself up, I followed that direction according to my individual development plan, and sure enough, I was able to achieve it a year later. Great advice. How do the definition of competencies help those focus on ensuring new college graduates have the skills necessary to enter and become part of a strong, productive workforce? The definition and competencies provide for development of strategies and tactics that will close the gap between higher education and the world of work. They lay the foundation for the work necessary to prepare college students for successful entry into the workforce by providing a common vocabulary and framework to use when discussing career readiness metrics on campus within employing organizations and as part of a national public policy. Establishing defined competencies as guidelines when educating and advising students. Establishing defined competencies to identify and assess when hiring the college educated. We have our own toolkits at Quinlan School of Business we would love to supplement them with career readiness toolkits by NACE and campus centers can use these in their work with students and organizations that hire new college graduates and they can use it in their efforts to identify high potential candidates. In fact, we're even using these seven competencies to evaluate our own student workers. Essentially, we're taking our student worker positions and making them internships. And these toolkits can really inform the work and efforts of a variety of stakeholders, including higher education administrators, faculty, labor market analysts, and public policymakers. It's already spring 2016, and so we're expecting them any day and looking forward to that. But I hope this video was helpful so that you can learn a little bit more about the competencies, whether you are a career services professional, a career coach, or whether you're a student just learning how to be focused on career preparedness.